We're joining with European allies to find and seize their yachts, their luxury apartments, their private jets. This guy's yacht was seized by French police. Yes, he's a Russian oligarch and is a boss of a Russian state energy company. Other oligarchs are shocked to find out their credit cards aren't working and they have to rely on using cash from safes. Yes, they're paying limos, butlers, and private jets all using cash. Now, a bunch of other yachts are going to the Maldives, which doesn't have an extradition treaty with the US. Today, we need to talk about Putin's war on Ukraine. It's upending tens of millions of lives in Ukraine. Putin chose this war. A certain number of Russian banks are removed from SWIFT. If Russia is at war with Ukraine, then the West is at an economic war with Russia. And it's impacting bank accounts and wallets of hundreds of millions of both Ukrainians and Russians, and even impacting pork prices in the UK. But this isn't just a story about what happens when Russia is cut off from the global economy. This is a story about this. On one hand, this is just printed paper. But on the other hand, this represents the most powerful weapon of all. Because underneath, this represents billionaires sailing into Monaco, flying into New York, buying mansions in London. But it also represents the gas in your car, the roof above your head, and the food on your table. And even though DC is almost 5,000 miles from Moscow, the decisions made there about this are impacting every single one of us. Within days of Putin's invasion into Ukraine, finance became the biggest weapon by much of the international community. See, their first response wasn't to send missiles and military to defend Ukraine, but it was to punish Russia by cutting it out, saying, no, you can no longer play ball with the rest of the global community. First, there's the banking stuff, where many Russian banks were cut out of SWIFT. SWIFT is how banks talk to each other across borders. Then, everyday customers became impacted. When Visa, MasterCard, even PayPal pulled out and said Russians can no longer use our services. Apple and Samsung have stopped selling phones in Russia. Luxury designers have stopped all sales, leaving a ghost town vibe in Moscow's most luxurious malls. Remember, there has been no military conflict in Moscow. Even Netflix announced it's stopping operations in Russia. Yet the power of this is leaving malls looking like they were destroyed. But hold up. Why is Louis Vuitton leaving Russia? Is it because they can't function without major credit cards? Or is this just on principle to say that they stand with Ukraine? Well, a little bit of both. See, some companies very likely know what's coming and wanted to appear to stand for people over profits. But I don't wanna get into a game of chicken or the egg here because there's one thing to understand. What is happening here economically is essentially bad for everyone, not just for Russia and not just for Putin. Netflix loses out on a million subscribers. Apple loses out on millions of dollars of sales. Russia accounts for 17% of total gas supplies. If you're a cashier at Burger King in North Carolina, this impacts you because you've already seen the price of your gas soar. Gas prices are hitting their highest levels in 15 years, and we're seeing the biggest increase in commodities since the 1960s. The action of this one man is causing ripples across the global economy. But hold on, it's likely not going to to crash Russia's economy because Russia's economy is smaller than that of Texas and represents just 1.2% of the world economy. So if Russia sits out, the world will move on. But how exactly did this become the West's biggest weapon to try and stop Putin? We were hearing earlier in the hour the Russian economy, it is plunging. Russia's currency has plunged 30% to the US dollar, its biggest drop ever. So if I'm importing parts into Russia or I'm an employee at Louis Vuitton in Moscow, my job has just been turned upside down. But it's not just those who are working with companies and clients outside of Russia. Even a Russian school teacher and taxi driver is already feeling this because anything from electronics to a bottle of Nutella has just become a lot more expensive. See, our economies are more globally connected than ever. I get it. The West needs to punish Putin. But is there a way to do that without punishing the people of Russia? I mean, many of whom have actually took to the streets to protest what he's doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
<laughs> or is there a way to even punish Putin without shooting the rest of the global economy in the foot? Remember, people are not the same as the government. There was even a surge of Russians trying to leave. Just look at this recent Google search trend. Not every company immediately left Russia though. Uniqlo has said that clothing is a necessity of life and says it's not going to stop selling clothes in Russia. But let's break this down. On one hand, Uniqlo's departure from Russia is probably not going to harm Putin. He seems more of an H&M kind of guy. But on the other hand, if Uniqlo stays in Russia, it increases profits and what would be taxes that go to Putin and his government. Remember, Putin's government. One more factor though is to remember that the West is kind of hoping that sanctions punish its people so much that they turn on Putin so that they revolt. Think of it like this. Remember when we were in school and there was that one rowdy kid, let's call him Trevor, who was always just super rowdy and he always caused trouble. The teacher would try to contain him and punish him but Trevor was still rowdy. So she'd say, guys, we can only start the pizza party when all the students behave. So all of us would turn around and give Trevor the death stare. Some maybe even yell at him. Just tell him to shut up. Shut up! That's kind of what sanctions aim to do here. It's to put pressure on Putin. And whether that comes from oligarchs or the people or both, it doesn't really matter so long as it inspires him to make a change. But I'm not really sure how likely that's gonna happen, and history shows that it doesn't happen too often. After all, he's not exactly up for re-election, at least for another 15 years or so. This is a guy who always just does whatever he wants, and this is a man where ego and image is everything. So we can't count on his own people potentially suffering financially or even taking to the streets to cause him to change his tune. Which makes me wonder, will sanctions actually work? Most economists say probably not, and it may not even collapse the Russian economy. But if there is one thing that he hates more than anything, it's the power of this. The US dollar is the global currency. It's the currency every country has agreed upon to say this is worth something. In fact, some countries love it so much that they ditched their own currency. So now everyone in El Salvador, Panama, and Cambodia only use this. The world says this is stable, this is what we agree upon that we can trust as a measure of value. So the US dollar has become the world's main reserve currency, which is why so many central banks and commercial banks have a stash of them. Even gold and oil are priced in US dollar. So is there a currency that can overtake the US dollar or even compete with it? The Euro. Well, it is the second most traded currency behind the dollar, but it's not quite as popular and economic growth in Europe has just been unimpressive. So what about the Chinese Yuan? China does have the world's second largest economy behind the US, and it's a massive trade partner with many countries. It launched a digital currency which is controlled by China's central bank, and the US is even studying how to respond to that. Because as you can imagine, the US loves being the world's global currency. About 90% of transactions are done in US dollar, but it is hard to imagine that happening. Finally, there's something that you and I are already familiar with, and it's not backed by any government. Bitcoin. Bitcoin, the digital currency created a dozen years ago as an alternative to cash, is exploding in value. In fact, when sanctions were announced against Russia, Bitcoin surged because people said, okay, if Russia can't access global financial markets, well, maybe they can use Bitcoin to play ball. And isn't Bitcoin a globally accepted currency that we can use? And what's really fascinating is this. For millions of people around the world, including many in Russia, Bitcoin has become sort of anti-American propaganda. Because when when people use Bitcoin, it means that people are less reliant on the US dollar. In fact, trading between Russia's currency and cryptocurrency has been soaring since all of this began. I wanna show you this guy. His name is Max Kaiser. He's a self-described Bitcoin ambassador. I interviewed him in El Salvador, and he loves two things, Russia and Bitcoin. He is a regular contributor on Russia Today, that global media network that was started and backed by Putin himself. Now, Russia Today has since been banned and blocked in many countries because it's seen as giving out Russian propaganda. Even Max said he just recently left Russia Today. But Max loves to bash the US central bank and the US dollar. This is garbage. This is garbage. He thinks Bitcoin is the future and they see him as an American who's anti-America. In fact, two other places where Max Kaiser is popular is Venezuela and Cuba. 
So what happens next? Well, the West is doing everything it can so this doesn't escalate into a full-blown war, hence the sanctions. But Putin himself is not likely to see the impact of these sanctions the way the average Russian citizen is seeing their life change. But what really fascinates me the most is how quickly the US dollar was weaponized, almost as if it was this symbolic thing that was ready for war. After 25 years of operating in Russia, major credit card companies have had to virtually pull out overnight. If you're Russian and you're used to receiving money and dollars in the past, right now the one thing you're probably looking at is cryptocurrency, which is why Bitcoin and crypto are surging on both sides of the border. But in the past, when a country imposed sanctions, economic sanctions on another country, there was no real Bitcoin for them to turn to. But will this time be different? 